a very good evening to all of you. Uh, as uh, discussed before, uh, you should take the test regularly. I hope uh, most of you guys uh, watching this video have taken the test before. Uh, so this session is about field cap seven analysis. Uh, there is a detailed agenda. Let me start with that. All right, so here we go. Uh, we'll start with the agenda discussion. Uh, move on to score percentile analysis. And uh, thereafter, uh, we'll dissect the paper into parts and see if, uh, which parts uh, of the paper we should have uh, attempted and which we could have left. Now, what is the idea here? The idea is to get a clarity on uh, the actual paper and the paper that you need to view. That depends on your current level of preparation. Uh, also depends on uh, the level of the paper on the day. So if it's a very easy paper, you solve more questions, right? And if it's difficult, you solve less, but you are you focus on accuracy. So over tests, you practice on this uh, speed selection and accuracy thing. Uh, that is something which I'll focus on uh, in details. A little bit on uh, the logic of uh, questions and sets. We will keep uh, going through that as you proceed uh, in our uh, class. Right. So the score percentile analysis, now uh, we know it, it was a 66 question standard uh, latest trend paper, uh, 24 questions in BA, 20 in DILR and 22 in QA. Uh, so overall uh, into three 198 marks. Now, uh, if you would have gone through the mock uh, analysis uh, and solution key, uh, the overall percentile uh, would would be uh, at a slightly lower score. But I have kept it on a slightly higher than given there, uh, just to you know take it up to the cat level. It might go up to this level. Okay, so a score of 115 approx uh, would definitely take you above 99 percentile in cat, 82, 95 percentile. 65 approx 90 percentile and corresponding 55 and 50 for 85 and 80 percentile. If you see there are sectional scores also. Uh, now see uh, for a general category student uh, for the newest or the, the baby arms or uh, the uh, corresponding 90 to 93 percentile colleges, uh, 80 percentile sectional is typically uh, what uh, you look at right minimum. 85 uh, percentile for new ions minimum. Okay, so a, a score between 15 to 20 in a section helps you cut uh, clear the basic minimum cutoff for the section, right? Uh, and the score between 20 to 35, more or less, that takes you towards uh, clearing cutoff of all ions and equivalent colleges. So that is how you need to understand, right? So the first target is to get a 15, second is to get a 20, then move towards 30. So sectional cutoff is important as well, right? So, uh, but that brings me to a point as you keep preparing, if by the time CAT comes close, uh, if you feel that one section is not going that well, you don't need to be a 35, 40 in every section, not required, okay? A little up and down is okay, cross sections. You can maximize in, a, in the section of your choice as long as, uh, uh, you know, uh, the cutoffs are clear. Uh, also, uh, in terms of number of questions, if you see uh, out of 66, 44 questions, see 132 marks, right? I'm assuming that there will be some accuracy here and there. Yeah, two, two, three, four questions will be wrong, right? Uh, so uh, more or less uh, still one third questions you could leave. 44 out of 66 will take you to a 99 percentile, right? And 30 out of uh, 66 more or less should be the attempt. Uh, to land somewhere close to a 90 percentile, right? So now depending on uh, which topic you like more and which question you could crack better, the last, the final questions, uh, you know, the ones uh, like if, if you are at a 99 percentile, the 22 questions that are remaining, to get beyond that, you can choose depending on, on that day which topic question you like or you have seen a difficult question, done it before, so do it or do it upon, according to your uh, love of topic. Or, or chapters, right? Uh, if you are at a 90 percentile, 36 questions you can leave, right? So you can be very selective 
right? And choose the questions that you want. So uh, as you keep moving towards the exam, right? Uh, from one mock to the other, uh, you, you learn a lot. Your scores will improve. But from one mock to the next mock, right? Uh, don't think of a drastic change. Like for example, if you got a 90 percentile in this mock, don't try to go for a 100 in the next one, right? So a 90 percentile, you, you, you are understanding that it's somewhere around, around 30 attempts, right? And you want to increase. In the next mock, maybe try to get to 36, 40 questions, right? Now, now if the level becomes altogether very easy, right, then the numbers will change. But then that is not required. So I, I think you're getting the overall uh, zest of things. Uh, sexual percentile is important. And overall, uh, there, there are questions that you need to attend. But selection is important because there are also questions that you can leave, right? Uh, in the exam, no point over focusing on the difficult questions. Try to select the easy to moderate ones and leave the difficult ones. Now, difficult ones do not mean that you cannot solve it. Okay. Avoid ego in the exam hall. You might be able to solve it, but there is a limitation of time, right? Basically, you have to select the easiest one for the day and crack them. Okay. You will gain speed. You will get gain accuracy, right? So selection automatically leads to speed and accuracy. It's very, very important, right? So I'll just take a normal, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, way in which I view the paper. I have divided the whole solving. Uh, discussion into two parts, right? The first set of questions which I felt were easy to moderate, okay? And the second, uh, where I felt they were moderate to difficult. So easy to moderate on the day and moderate to difficult on the day, right? Now, if you select and solve these, you will get a certain percentile automatically, okay? You have to learn to leave these. Ab ye sara ban gaya, fir isme se kuch banana hai to banao. That should be your power of selection. Okay, so you have to become masters at selection. That is what you need to understand. All right. So with that, uh, we come to the end of the very first part of getting, getting a general idea on uh, how you should have or could have, uh, uh, you know, got a good score here. Anything, you know, properly selected 30 questions would have taken to something somewhere around 90 percentile. Properly selected 45 questions, let's say 44, 45 would have taken to you, you to a 99, right? And above, as you keep getting more and more questions, you could have reached towards 99 point high, right? For the last 22 questions would take you there. Remember, even when you are solving and analyzing a mock, those are questions that are essay and other people samaj nahi aare, unko pseudo understand kar lena hai, solution ke saath. Pseudo understand matlab, itna samaj lena hai ki agli baar rasa same question aajaya to bandhya. बहुत ज्यादा ना एकदम एक्सट्रीम एक दो डिफिकल्ट पे दिमाग खराब करके अपने आप को प्रेशर में नहीं लेना है नाउ दिस इज समथिंग यू नो डोंट टेक इट यू नो एज अ स्टूडेंट टीचर थिंग व्हिच आई एम टेलिंग यू बिकॉज़ यू नो टीचर शुड नेवर से दैट यू 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 शुड स्टूडर लर्न टू फोर क्वेश्चंस बट जस्ट आई एम टॉकिंग एज एन एक्सपर्ट हु जस्ट टू कैट यू नो हैज टेकन कैट मोर देन यू एंड मोर नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स देन यू एंड इज नाउ टेक लुक्स एट एवरी कैट एज एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू मैक्सिमाइज द स्कोर सो uh, focus on, you know, when you are analyzing out of 66 questions, your key sh should be, you know, 60 questions definitely clear on HEA. Uh, the last 10% questions more or less clear on the chalega uh, or pseudo understand. Thoda ek do bar padliya, yaad kar liya, type process memory build kar liya, wo bhi chalega. Ki similar aajaya to ban jaya, right? Because there might be a couple of topics which you don't like a lot, right? So for example, I, did, I don't like permutation combination a lot. And uska hi, let's say, no difficult, difficult questions hai. So PNC is difficult, if it's the same exam, then you should have to do the same exam. Yes, you should have to challenge the same exam. No, it's okay. It's a smart preparation that is required. I hope you got the point. Okay. So with this introduction, now we will move to the next part of the agenda. Verbal ability, then DILR, and then QA. Section by section, we will be going into the depths of each section and looking at which questions should you have attempted first, right? Uh, the target is to divide the paper into two parts so that we know where our first 90 percentile is going to come and which part is the one for beyond. Okay. Uh, we'll see how many questions are there. How many they can 90 percentile was somewhere like 30 questions and 99 percentile was 44 questions, right? And beyond is the 22 questions that remain, right? So, We'll try to dissect and understand that if you have 
कठिन वाले को देखना ही छोड़ दे तुरंत छोड़ दे के छोड़े मतलब राइट सो वी कैन स्कोर वेरी वेल राइट सो विद वर्ड्स लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड एंड मूव टू वर्ड्स द नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द सेशन वील स्टार्ट विथ वर्बल एबिलिटी राइट सी यू दैट right so let's start with the first section brc the first passage uh, 1 to 4 uh despite a modest and even global recovery from the economic downturn oil industry kept on uh, growing and enjoyed success because geopolitical instability it affected oil supply and the prices of crude oil increased uh, after 2009 uh the crude oil was at 42 dollars and after 2 years right it surged to 100 reaching more than 125 in uh, early may so we are talking around 2011 and apart from a few dips in mid 12 and 13 uh, the prices stayed high so basically till 2014 so what is the first paragraph talking about is talking about after the post 8 9 uh, economic downturn oil prices remained high for most of the times so theme based reading is important this is a contemporary style rc okay uh let me run through so the second paragraph then talks about the demand uh was modest but the prices were high in 11 to 14 because of the uncertainties and uh, uh tensions uh, that floated third paragraph talks about 2014 15 uh a lot of uh, production and competition led to oversupply and the prices started falling down right and the last next uh, paragraphs talk about industry wide budget cuts were there layoffs were there in response to the price fall uh, and the final closure talks about the industry response was it a necessity or an overreaction so you can read this theme based very fast it's a contemporary style uh, article uh, and factual in nature too so i found the level of reading pretty easy if you look at the questions which of the following events did not occur right okay so, so uh, it, these are direct type questions okay so uh, what happened after it hit 50 right so these things what happened after something happened right so budget cut termination etc etc these are very factual questions okay uh, the third one could be slightly moderate all the other three were easy in my opinion right so uh, uh, which are the following definitely to according to the passage so again a query based question right so very factual qa and based questions uh, 3 to 4 correct easily possible right that is what i felt for this rc hence this falls in the category where which you should have attempted for 90 percentile okay so we are looking at what questions we could have attempted for 90 percentile so these four questions fall in the bracket let's go to the questions 5 and 8 yes these also fall in the bracket for 90 percentile let's see the first paragraph talk about talks about corporate governance is better when independent directors and sh- shareholders have a transparent working the second paragraph theme is corporate culture uh, ethical means self behave versus corrupt means yes men people around third paragraph talks about good governance depends on the value system which means ethics and integrity right and this kind of system addresses the incentive systems right uh, the next paragraph talks about uh, a good value system uh, that talks about hiring transactions systemic uh, systemic transparency encouraged and creating transparency at the employee level and finally we talk about corporate leaders need to lead by examples example analogy has been drawn uh, for a case of cost cutting so again uh, contemporary style uh, level of reading easy that is what i felt so according to the passage right again you know uh according to the author so these are direct questions right okay uh what is the suggestion by the author so this is an implication type but uh, pretty pretty doable right okay uh, and according to the passage good governance is again according to the passage so similar to the first one i felt that uh, three out of four Uh, could have been achieved here so why am i saying 3 out of 4 that because verbal uh, you might run a risk of getting one or two wrong that's okay right but basically you could have got all correct because the level was not that difficult and the questions were direct right so these two rcs means eight questions they fall in the bank of must do questions in the uh, 
set. So in the in the section. So I hope uh, you attempted these. If you missed any of these RCs, uh, the recommendation is you should have done it, right? Because contemporary uh, sets with factual based questions, those are to be done. All right. Okay. Now I have taken some para some uh, the VR questions here. VR questions. I guess almost all of these uh, from the section I found uh, pretty doable. So they are in the 90 percentile set. One, first my summary, uh, I could clearly uh, find, identify why the others are not right. Okay. So the, the there was no dis, uh, confusion uh, among the options. Summary, you just need to read the whole passage and find out which one best sums up uh, the main points in the passage. Okay. There should be not something uh, in terms of tone and content that comes from outside. So this one I found easy. Okay, uh, you must have gone through the solution key. You can go through it later as well. Uh, question number 20, again, it's a para summary exercise, right? It's talking about crime and stuff. Okay, uh, now again, uh, I have uh, uh, see here, uh, looked at the reason. Uh, the only way, the only way is not in uh, the kind of uh, thing which has been mentioned. You cannot assume, don't assume uh, content or tone in para summary. Okay. Don't assume content or tone, and then try to uh, capture which one of the which one best captures. Okay, like D is part, right? Uh, best capturing is it. So again, this one I found very doable, right? All right, now para uh, jumbles. Uh, so see, para jumbles. I feel since there are no options, I always feel that these questions are moderate uh, in nature. So if it is easy to moderate. Means what? What do I mean by that? Readable and you know starting sentence thinkable, okay, and then connecting logic working means you can go from one to the other. Okay, so take your shot. Don't overthink because there are no options. Take your shot. If it's not Read करने में आसानी है. Starting sentence identify हो जा रहा है. And then समझ में आ रहा है इसके बाद क्या आएगा? इसके बाद क्या आएगा? इसके बाद क्या आएगा? Take your shot. Okay, so these because see it's easy to moderate. Are moderate to difficult? Samaji niara sentence, you know, ka koi starting sentence ni identify kar paare, pande mein dikkat ho rahi hai. Leave it. So leave early if readability or starting sentence identification is difficult. Otherwise, take your shot at the order. I felt both were uh, doable. The first one DBCA, okay, uh, and the second one. So uh, I, I've gone through each of these, right? So the, these were doable. Uh, I. Uh, you could uh, get or capture the uh, order of these sentences. You know? So don't uh, sh shy away from PJs. I, I hope you got the logic. Uh, they will always be easy to moderate if you are solving, right? Take a shot. Uh, if reading itself is a problem and starting sentence is a problem, leave it. All right. That's the way yeah, your mind should work. Or one out. Uh, this was very, very easy. I felt there's nothing like boys and girls here. It's about left and right brain. Okay. And uh, so theme versus sub theme is, is the key. And uh, the last one, this one also I, I found easy, right? Uh, because uh, uh, the, the others are uh, talking about, you know, uh, distance learning program uh, uh, coming way. And this last one is talking about distance learning versus uh, online education. So in odd one out, there's a theme and there is one which falls off the sub theme. So all five sentences have a common theme, but four are joined by a sub theme. Think like this. Okay. Uh, you will be able to get one. Uh, these questions correct. So in total, if I see one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, and those eight. So see these 14 questions doable max. All right. You should have attempted these. Okay. Now, Coming to the point, see in verbal, it's not all or none, right? I mean, uh, it might happen that uh, there are other RCs, you have a lot of time left uh, and uh, other RCs, you find it a bit difficult to read, but then questions might not be difficult. So, Baki, the content that remains, right? That content will also come. Let's think of these 14 questions as your 90 percentile route, okay? Uh, from the others, the, 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 the other two RCs that remain, uh, if you are able to read them fast and, uh, you know, get uh, some questions correct, right, and, and be accurate, uh, leave questions if you are not clear, you, you will be able to, you know, go, go towards that 99 to 100 percentile journey, you, know, you, you will move forward. But first understanding which ones will get, get me the easiest marks, right, that is the key. 
Okay, so 14 questions have been put in the 90 percentile bracket. Uh, what uh, we will do is uh, we will now move towards the questions on uh, the next section DILR, which were in the 90 percentile bracket. Okay, so give me a minute. Let's see uh, DILR 90 percentile first. We are just trying to understand. So I'm making a note here. Okay. VA, we have already got uh, 14 questions, right? Let's see. DLR, the first set, 10 members in a department, there's a proposal to form a team from the department. All right. So there are some conditions given, right? We call it clues or cues, right? Uh, now, largest possible size. So, so, it, all these things are related to uh, following these conditions, right? Uh, a team must include one among E, G, and H. So one of these must do, must be there. C or F, one of these must be there, right? So you keep noting down the information, right? And accordingly, then you start trying to solve. So see, uh, I, I just uh, read this set of instruction. Uh, e, G or F, I've written three separately, and then C or F has to be there, right? And then I've looked at the further conditions, right? Uh, the cues, uh, and uh, then I was able to solve these pretty easily. So I felt this whole set was uh, uh, pretty easy. Uh, how many questions do we have? Uh, right, we have four. So four questions doable. So again, uh, in DILR and QA, ideally you should not get anything wrong. Okay, uh, from the sets that you are uh, attempting. But at all you feel that there is one question which is getting you stuck, leave it. It's okay if you get three out of four as well. But ideally it should be four out of four if you are attempting the set. Okay, uh, next one. Uh, this one, uh, there were traders who started trading at different times of the day and left, right? I felt in this one, uh, the first two were pretty uh, simple because, you know, uh, the conditions were not uh, concrete on uh, identifying, uh, you know, maximum uh, return or uh, which one is always true. So based on that, I felt it was pretty doable. In terms of the other two, uh, uh, you know, uh, the 16th one was uh, a bit tricky. So in this... Uh, uh, you know, see, I've written 13, 14, very doable, absolute conclusions, not possible. If you have tried, you will, uh, and read the solution, you will understand what I'm saying. Uh, a, in 15th, uh, A will make the most loss, uh, B and C, uh, you are comparing them, right? So, 15th can be done too. 16th was, uh, needed a lot of, uh, you know, inequalities and uh, uh, relations to be formed and then solved. So, in such a set, right, uh, you get 2, 3 out of 4 correct, that is fine. Okay, but, uh, Overall, in terms of reading, it was uh, not uh, very difficult. So I felt the set was doable up to three questions pretty much. Okay. Now, further, uh, if, if we go to the next one, now this one I found uh, pretty, uh, you know, uh, easy, easy to solve because this was calculation based. All right. Uh, you have uh, merchandise imports and exports on the left hand side and you have the percentage share of the same on the right hand side. Right. So. If you could read the graph properly, uh, you would get the numbers easily, right? Uh, see, uh, it's, it's asking you approximate manufacturer exports of India in 2016, proportion of positive to negative trade balance. You have to just fill in the numbers and solve it, okay? Uh, see, uh, the numbers, average exports, like first question, right? You find the average exports, it comes as 295, right? And it's given that 75% uh, uh, were mer merchandise. You, you look at that from the right, right, right hand side and you multiply you get the answer. So you just have to read the graph and then accordingly solve, right? So it was a bit of calculation, but doable. So I felt, uh, and, and in such a set, you generally don't tend to make mistakes. There are calculations, but there's no confusion, right? So it was a DI based kind of a set, but less uh, confusion is how this I would read this, right? So again, uh, you're getting three, four questions, ideally four, uh, should not have been uh, difficult. So if I put it, the 90 percentile uh, sets, right? Uh, typically, I would say 11 questions from here were doable. So till now, verbal, we have taken 14, DILR, 11, out of the whole paper, which were doable. Now, why am I uh, analyzing like this? Let me reiterate. Understand students, I have myself gone through a whole journey of preparing uh, through mocks, improving from one mock to the other, and I've trained students over 10 batches now. Uh, let's let's understand uh, why, why, why am I telling you that is, the first uh, 
reaction that comes to us after taking a test is which questions did we get wrong and uh, you know uh, how do i solve these two questions which look so difficult but that is not where the key to success lies those questions you have to take up which you got wrong or you know uh, which uh, appeared to be very difficult take them up in the analysis sit with them for 2 3 hours later a day after you have taken them off that is a different game altogether but when you are inside the mock you have to select the easiest and the most doable questions think of the word doable every time you attempt okay you will easily be in a good percentile bracket there problem that happens is people tend to get stuck in every question and try to read and solve every question that is where the problem is practicing not doing that is what you have to learn okay with that let's move to the next part and that is obviously the quantitative ability uh, 90 percentile that is the doable questions now here uh, le- let's uh, look at the questions uh, the first one uh, this is uh, calculus based uh, if you uh, have solved such a questions you take 6 plus 0 f6 f0 very doable okay and uh, then then you get f minus 6 and you you have to solve it right so it's a type of question read the solution okay uh, here uh, you can put options values also so again i felt very doable or you can actually solve it also all right uh, in this one again uh, it was simply about forming two equations very easy level i felt this one uh, this one uh, 30% uh, filled with what yeah so again this just had this was one transaction in terms of percentages so yeah, you would find that uh, 150 plus 30 you got 180 and now 75% cold uh, so 3 by 4 105 so Uh, you just solve it then and you get the answer right 90% so that is what uh, this one was again easy uh this again uh, chances of so again if you have done a, a bit of uh, probability uh, you you will be able to get this uh, because uh, there are not many conditions that will get you uh, you know that there there can just be three cases and uh, you can solve it look at the solution doable again uh what was this one average speed ka question very simple this was okay just draw the diagram look at the equations so you need to practice in a way that you know which kind of questions are easy only then you will be able to know select in math see every time you look read a question in the first 30 seconds okay if you are targeting a 99 plus percentile in the first 30 seconds you should be sure whether i will try or leave okay leave if you think that this topic is not my favorite and this looks difficult leave if you think that you are not understanding the question try if you think i have done this kind of a question before or try if you think that this is easy to moderate and i like this type of questions type should strike in your mind okay so that is why it's very important that you you know uh, the entire the, uh, if you go through the bpact study material complete it once re- revise it twice and then you know before the exams again read read it for the third time at least right all the tests mock tests previous year papers there should be a 2 3 4 round revision so that your selection becomes important uh, better more so in maths that's what i'm trying to tell you okay uh, the next this one length and breadth reduce a uh, cute question very simple uh, class 7th 8th base maths uh, easy uh, then this was 10000 bucks we divide by a single equation based question can be solved easy investment right uh, this one uh, product of three uh, x y z uh, right is 192 z is equal to 4 so this becomes 48 so you, you could see the solution uh, solvable easy You put the values, you'll get the answer, right? Uh, this one again. Uh, if you take the equations properly, again, it, equation-based question solvable. Okay. Uh, next one. Uh, P P can fill in six hours, Q in nine hours, and R can empty in twelve hours. Take the LCM. Uh, what do we get? Seventy-two chocolates. Let's call the tan. The efficiency of P is twelve, Q is eight, and this one becomes minus six. Form the equations. Easy to solve. Uh, this one AP. So AP is very simple. If you know this, A plus C by two is equal to B. You put that equation in here, and you will be able to solve it. Okay. Uh, you can also uh, put the value of the options and try it out. All right. Okay. Uh, now uh, next one. Uh, it, it, this one, if you get the diagram correct, it's very easy to solve. You just get an equation, and you'll get the answer. Eighteenth, uh, I found it easy because if you know the concept of this type of question, no. It's not difficult to solve. Actually, if there are three points and this mod kind of relation is given, right? What are the points? Four, five, and seven point two, right? So if if you have to add the absolute values of these points, if you take a point anywhere apart from this middle point, 
Okay, let's say we take it here, right? So distance from uh, this point plus uh, distance from this point plus this point, three distances get added. But if you take this point, only these two get added. So this is the case when you maximize this kind of an equation. All right, that's the concept here. So these questions uh, I felt were doable, pretty doable. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 questions I found here as well. So if you see till now, VA 14 questions, DILR 11 questions, and QA 14 questions. We are sitting on 39 questions and I talked about 30. So if you take these 39 questions and in which you have 30 attempt kar liya hota na, to tum 90 plus percentile ke. Or agar inko tumne pura bana liya hota, to tum 95 plus percentile ke to patka hota. Ana, to alag dusra part hai, right? 99 plus wala. Ana, uski liye, to jo remaining questions hai, unme se take up karna hota hai. So first thing you need to understand, a 90 to 95 percentile score in any mock test will come if you are able to select and solve your easy to moderate ones. Why do I say your? Because students, अगर कोई question तोड़ा tough भी है, अगर तुमने पहले बना रखा है, तो वो तुम्हारे लिए easy है. या कोई topic तुम्हारा बहुत favorite है, उसको थोड़ा tough भी है, तो तुम्हारे लिए easy है. और जो सबके लिए easy है, वो तो easy है ही. Right? So, all these types of questions fall under your easy to moderate. If you are able to select and solve, you will, you will come out as a winner. You know? And this is how I feel I cracked CAT. And this is how uh, till late, uh, I guess, uh, the kind of percentiles I'm talking about, uh, students in four digit numbers, right? Uh, thousands of my students have cracked CAT uh, above uh, 90 percentile and uh, many hundreds above the high percentiles, all by following the right kind of strategy and mindset. You know? And obviously, attend the classes, revise a lot, revise the mock test, revise the previous year papers, that is true, right? But don't run after the most difficult question or quantity of questions, run after strategy, run after selection, keep the right kind of things in your mind and you will become an achiever, right? So with that, we come to an end of the 39 questions which matter. Uh, first, there are 27 questions still remaining. These call and uh, come under, ye uh, 39 ho jaye to in mein jana hai, right? So these are the second grade uh, questions uh, for our particular mock test. Uh, we'll now uh, fast uh, just run through those and I'll give some tips on, uh, you know, uh, how to think about these uh, across sections. So we will again start with VA and move towards uh, DILR and QA next, right? So let's get started uh, with the next part. We have already seen the 39 questions uh, which you should have prioritized or could have prioritized. Let's move to the next 27 questions. The one which take you to the 99 to 100 range, right? Or maybe 95 to 100. Uh, but then as I said, uh, it depends on, uh, you know, on this part, the topics you like, right? Then in, in verbal, a, a, a bit of, uh, you know, a fast attempt, but mark only if sure. So you are kind of, you know, attempting the RC, but uh, looking only for questions which are easy to solve from that RC, right? Uh, so topics you like, then for fast attempting RCs. Uh, and uh, the third category is some pre-seen question, right? So that becomes easy for you, though it's not overall easy, right? So that is the second part. Uh, let's begin. So let's have a look at this RC. Uh, it has been observed by Adam Smith. The word value has different meanings. Value in terms of what it is used for and the one it, next one is for exchange, right? Uh, and uh, generally things which have use have little value in exchange and those who have great value in exchange have little use. Like water and air, they are useful but there is no value for exchange. Uh, so utility is not the measure of exchangeable value, although utility is essential to the value, right? So further, if you see, uh, possessing utility, commodities derive their exchange value from two sources. So what are the two sources? One, scarcity and other, quantity of labor required to obtain them. So if you see, uh, this has been elaborated further, 
there are some commodities which is value is determined by scarcity alone right like uh, rare statues pictures coins right or some rare uh, grapes wine so it's not dependent on labor but it depend, depends on scarcity however they form a very small part of mass of commodities daily exchange which are mostly about uh, labor necessary to obtain and uh, you know transform things so scarcity and labor are two major sources uh, on which exchange value depends now in speaking of commodities uh, uh, labor has become been an important factor right and uh, exchangeable value right it also dependent on labor expended in, in such commodities uh, the real price of everything says adam smith whatever really costs to man who wants to acquire it is the toil and trouble of acquiring it right so labor was the first price and uh, you know uh, it could be a direct, a direct correlation could, could have been seen uh, between exchanging commodities in terms of how much labor you need to put an example of uh, uh, deer and beaver has been beautifully put here so uh, so this is uh, what we are talking about in this rc majorly i found the level of reading moderate it was not difficult but uh, easy to read uh, but not contemporary right so if someone has a good good practice over uh, reading uh, old school articles right then it won't be difficult for you right so that is why i have put it moderate right and theme based reading will make it uh, comfortable for you uh, when i say theme based remember try to capture the flow more than the content try to capture the tone whether the author is positive negative biased analytical what is the tone and then comes the content capturing the main points so these are the things which you need to fast read and capture so if you have clear in your mind that you just need to keep capturing these things you will read fast at the same time not lose track of the key things given in the passage and now the questions first question is not true so again it's a query type question right uh, this more or less relationship is not exactly true so i, I did not find this one difficult uh, cannot be supported right so it's again a, a factual uh, kind of thing right uh, again uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, first two are given decreases in proportion to increase in competition nothing like this uh, is uh, mentioned right something which resonates with the example so all these questions if you see right are pretty much uh, direct passage based okay so it was not very difficult but then yes the point is the reading itself is a little tricky so you uh, in such passages speed read the passage keep the theme in mind and then go and just read once and see which which uh, questions are very clear to you and mark so next one main idea that that that's kind of a summary based right so the best one right uh, is becomes the answer so i felt overall questions slightly tricky and in variety right there were direct questions summary based questions right but doable okay uh, yes if you are well prepared in, i mean in terms of a good reading uh, habit right and then the process which you know you catch the demand of the questions and you eliminate properly again 2 3 4 achievable but overall i rate this rc as moderate because the other two were easier than this as simple as that contemporary and uh, more direct fair enough now this one has uh, six questions so again uh, speed read and uh, you know try to solve as many as you can uh, delia avusi's office uh, may not appear to be the beating heart of american business it's in residential brooklyn uh, but uh, hundreds of women uh, entrepreneurs they come here right this women business center uh, is uh, something which uh, provides workshops training advice and mentoring to would be female entrepreneurs government funded we have okay now, women have different challenges compared to men. Uh, this is what Avosi uh, believes. Uh, and uh, that is where they step in. It makes it easy for women to become entrepreneurs. So, this is, we are talking about United States and uh, this uh, women uh, business center run by Avosi, right? In United uh, Kingdom, UK, the picture is more bleak. Uh, business entrepreneurship opportunities are being missed because of untapped business potential of women. But, it is growing. Female entrepreneurship is growing. Uh, British Chamber of Commerce suggests that women are better at uh, some different aspects of doing business like innovation, uh, uh, gap identification and uh, technology adoption compared to men. So it is growing, right? They have creativity and drive, right? But then why uh, US has uh, more entrepreneurs uh, in, uh, who are female and women, British women entrepreneurs get le low level of uh, uh, funding? So. Actually, uh, these people like Avusi Goldberg, they believe 
that additional support needs to be given to female founders that is important uh, you know because there's a critical uh, you know critical difference between how uh, both male and female vcs the funders the fund givers how they view they believe they ask promotion oriented question to men like how to make it uh, big and large prevention oriented for women you know there's always a fear of failure associated with women so that kind of a bias exists in the uh, you know funding uh, community right so bringing women uh, uh, mentors and investors on board that will help women uh, grow uh, faster and better in the terms of uh, you know entrepreneurial drive and achievement so new york is a good model and we, we can learn from new york so that is what the passage is all about it is an interesting passage uh, it's contemporary related to fundraise and uh, the women uh, uh, centric as well uh, but uh, overall since uh, there are uh, you know many questions and variety of questions i felt uh, tackling this becomes a slightly longer affair and time may become a constraint hence overall i have classified it as a moderate level rc right uh, but if you are uh, fast enough you could have done this uh, first one is introduces the passage uh, I, I found doable definitely falls again query based question again uh, you can go through the explanations uh, again i found this was uh, doable inference based question right uh, which can be inferred from the passage right so uh, but the options were slightly close in most of these questions corresponding to the author's idea so not very tricky but moderate right uh, questions are uh, slightly close so moderate overall right uh, again you, should, you the, the idea of going through these long passages is speed read you know, and get a certain level of accuracy going right uh, select attempt or leave so don't overthink if you think you, you read a, you read all the questions and maybe three four you feel that yes got it got it got it got it click those leave the others right so again uh, overall out of these uh, 10 questions i would say uh, if, if you are fast enough to read all you you could have uh, you know cracked six to seven questions but yes this is what takes you towards the higher percentiles uh, this part i classify as ba uh, moderate to difficult all right moving on let's go to the dilr section now in this uh, you know uh, there are two sets which i have put here set one and two both were long set two was slightly unclear as well so whatever be the reason if you feel that there is a set which is unclear right leave it okay uh, in dilr particularly you can always feel free to leave or classify one or two sets depending on the level as uh, I, I don't care today right and focus on the others so set selection becomes very important okay they like we see we saw in the uh, you know uh, easier part discussion of this there can be a set where you can easily read and understand and crack two three questions and leave one that is okay right but there can also be a set which you can totally leave all right you don't need to spend time on every set in depth first you need to read for a couple of minutes and decide whether i am going for it or not all right selection becomes important all right if you think that something's uh, you know you're not able to catch a clue something feels missing something is not uh, understandable leave that set right okay now moving to this set 10 students sitting in two rows very long lots of points very long and lots of points so again i'm not saying this this one is not doable you could have done it but the point is do you have the time to do it now i felt those 11 questions right 33 marks right they were more easily doable than these two sets because they are very long first of all and lots of points right so let's see 10 students two rows of each uh, took their 500 point exam and the scores were multiples of 10 no two received the same score okay and uh, akshay sat next to prachi and the student scoring 82 percent 82 percent of 50 is how much 500 is 410 which was the lowest so see first information 410 was the lowest and 10 difference of scores uh, 10 people taking to 500 so we know the scores now 420 30 40 50 60 70 18 90 and 500 why because all of them have to be distinct 410 is minimum 500 is maximum 10 ka difference hona chahiye. so this is the only way so this is how you interpret the first information partly okay now uh, there are some informations given they are sitting in rows of five so you start thinking of diagrams like this okay now, when you move further, the sum of scores in the first column is 880. Also, you, you see the last point. Uh, it's given that there is an average difference, right? And also given that the average of these three is same. So, the sum of these three columns will be same, 
okay now uh, another piece of information is that average test score in the first row is 46 points higher than the average in the second row 46 average higher means 46 into 5 230 total higher right so you have to interpret all this information and try to fill this if you fill this the questions can be answered with ease now this will take a lot of time there are not there are many points so see my point is this would not be my first priority to get a 90 percentile i will not take this set okay so this set is a second priority for me second point is if you are very well in practice in taking up these cues and writing down fast and uh, setting these you can try it's not not triable you could have tried it okay so see i, I i've just gone a little bit into this uh, see uh, i wrote down the first information that there are these scores possible right and then we saw that there should be an average difference of 230 so uh, uh, when i looked at these right uh, i i could uh, get that the total is 4550 uh, and uh, you wanted an average difference so doing all that a bit of calculations uh, this is how uh, the first level information got translated okay when, when you get these scores then you look at which numbers will get added to form these scores and then you also you know are able to uh, get which numbers belong where right uh, once you get that information uh, then you uh, actually move on and uh, you know further uh, put in the values into the set Right. So eventually uh, you, you will get something like this. Okay. All the big ones on top, but still there will be a difference of 10. So that 460 and 450 will be the separate numbers. You have to uh, go through the solution or do it again. Right. And then you will be able to understand this. Once you reach till here. Okay. Then the column wise scoring 910, you will get this uh, and these numbers you will get. Okay. And eventually you will come, uh, come up with this kind of a table and be able to uh, solve it. Right. Now, see, uh, Try doing this uh, later. Uh, also understand when you are doing the solution analysis, okay, a set like this, which is lengthy but doable, if you have not done in the exam, uh, take 20, 30 minutes at home and redo properly, right? And if there are any doubts, do it with the solution. So uh, try to, uh, you know, uh, and once you have done with the solution now, I would always recommend redo once to revise doing the steps fast. That is my point. When you revise doing the steps fast, no, you are actually at the end of the test trying to build a uh, you know process memory of how to work through these questions faster. Now, should we do? Should you do it uh, very soon, immediate at that point of time? No, after some gap. So, how that can be done better? I will deal with that later uh, in the session today. Okay. So this was another set. Uh, so if you reach till here, more or less you are done with the set. This might be time taking practice. Uh, is required to master such sets. Uh, is it in my first priority 90 percentile uh, set of questions? No, it's not. Okay, because of the length and uh, so many constraints. Similarly, uh, the next set also has a lot of constraints. All right, seven players participate in a chess tournament. Each plays against each. Right, uh, tournament starts on Monday, finishes Wednesday. Equal number. So, how many matches? Seven C two. Uh, 7 into 6 by 2 that becomes 21 matches because each plays against each uh, now uh, three days same number of matches so monday wednesday monday tuesday wednesday there will be seven matches each right okay now observations are given about monday tuesday and so on you have to fill in the fill in the observations of the matches right like a will be play so all the matches you can write okay and similar simply you uh, then uh, put in all these clues again lengthy and the, at a point confusing so once you solve like just like the previous question you might be able to solve it so see i, I just started uh, up to a level for this uh, there were some uh, out of the total matches see each one is playing against each try doing like this okay and uh, then uh, you fill in the information which is given and then you accordingly try to solve so like the previous question this kind of a set is lengthy okay if you are getting logic during your solution analysis don't overthink about, uh, you know, should I have done it in the exam or not? It's okay. See, understand, you need to be uh, building the skill where you are able to analyze and understand the easy and the shorter ones and get them. That is where the key lies. And then out of the lengthy ones, if you cross 90, 95 percentile, going to the 95 to 100 percentile, if you are moving in that direction, then you choose one more and solve. Right? But the first target should always be the easy 
easier side and the shorter side of things uh, when it comes to set India LR. Now I have taken uh, that one question from this also. The 16th one in the you know first set, uh, the third set in the first uh, easier part, where I talked about uh, that the last one has lots of conditions. So you can go through this solution. So many conditions here that eventually this becomes too lengthy to attempt. I would not recommend solving this. Uh, you should have left this, right? So overall, if you understand, uh, good selection, right? So length of solving. Okay, the time it might take and understanding whether you are able to understand, when I say understand, will you be able to structure this to solve? These are the things which you uh, take into account while deciding which RC, uh, which uh, DLR set to solve. Uh, more or less see if five sets are coming, your first target should be to select and solve the two easiest ones. Okay, third one, uh, full or part is okay, right? And the fourth one, if time permits, full or part. That is how we think. Uh, in the DILR section mostly uh, and uh, if, if, if the level is easy, you might be able to solve three or four full, if not very easy. So uh, you, you might be able to solve two and maybe third just start or something. So that will vary depending on how good you are with the section and also how the, the exam day comes, right? But typically more or less, okay, more or less, you always have an option to uh, leave one uh, full, okay? and uh, maybe another one, two questions. So this is the kind of option you will have in the exam, right? So uh, if unless the paper comes altogether very easy, and if that comes, you will understand and obviously you will solve all. But then my point here is no need to take undue pressure and get stuck in a set which seems difficult and you feel that no, I have to do it and you end up spending five, seven minutes and then quit it. Decision uh, thinking process should always be about first two easy sets, then the third doable one. And then the fourth and the fifth, if time permits, right? That's how you should be thinking. All right. So I, I hope you understand this. Let's now uh, move to the uh, QA, uh, the moderate to difficult part. So uh, coming to uh, the QA mod to difficult part, we have already taken a good number of questions. Let's see how many do we have here. One, two, three, four, and five, and six, seven, eight questions here. So we have already taken 14 out of this lot. So these eight questions, as I said, QA is all about selecting uh, one and uh, uh, one by one selecting very fast, right? So if there's a question of this type which you have done before or this particular topic which you are very confident, only then you should have gone into any of these eight questions, okay? Because generally, these will take more time than the previous lot, the, the 90 percentile lot, and might also be difficult in terms of getting the final answer and you might end up uh, losing a bit on accuracy. So look at the first one. It's an archery contest, shoots three arrows, okay? And gets sil six silver coins when he hits, when he misses, he get, loses two, and if he hits the target but not the bullseye, loses three. So these three types of condition, A plus B plus C, the total number of shots is 300. Each shot has a certain, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, marking uh, to it and totally gets uh, 192 coins, right? Uh, the number of times he misses the target. So you take these two, you form an equation between, uh, 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 you know, uh, B, A and B, and then you accordingly try to solve. So this is a maximum minima, uh, you, you form equations, uh, you get a maximum minima case, and then you solve. So obviously, uh, a little bit of demark use here. So if it comes easy to you, well and good. If not, uh, you can leave. So uh, yes, this is a moderate level question. You need to go through the solution in details to uh, capture it in details, right? Next one, making 120 pizzas. Uh, there is a rate given 24 per minute. Okay, so uh, and then first one, 30 working less than five minutes. So there will be an inequality coming here. Second and third working together, they, uh, complete in more than seven minutes because total is set to 20, uh, 12 minutes. So 360, how many minutes will the culinary take? So there, there, there is going to be a set of equations and in equation, you have to write it down. Okay. And then solve. Okay. Moderate level, not a very direct straightforward question. I, I, I did not find it very tough, but okay. Thus, you know, this would not be my pick for 90 percent. Right. It will be my pick for 99 point high. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, ABC is a trapezium and uh, always the point of intersection, ratio of the triangles. So if you uh, see this one, first you need to draw the diagram, uh, 
uh, then you you need to use the concept of similarity and then there will be you know see it's, it's uh, i've written it down here uh, ratio of base and same attitude so, so there will be an area comparison uh, based on half base into height uh, formula so it requires a bit of time to solve not the not not my 90 percentile bracket 95 percentile and above kelly i will try this question okay two digit number uh, in a base let's call it a b so a ko a b kya raha hu is one third in base 11 is one third of the number when you form uh, ba in base 19 right so you, you will form a relation here okay and you will get cases so we know uh, 11 a plus b and 19 b plus a you can expand it in, uh, in in the base you will get cases and there's a slight catch of a case zero doable okay but moderate because there has to be a amount of thinking uh, go through the solutions all right uh, 418 enrolled in chemistry Okay, so this is a Venn diagram, right? Some people enrolled in chemistry, uh, some people both. Uh, you, you make the Venn diagram, and then there is a relation given. Okay, so you you so Venn diagram to the equation relation, and then the solving. Okay, needs a bit of visualization and timing. Moderate table question. Uh, Ninety-five percentile around range ke liye karna padega. Uh, and there was a slight confusion on the diagram. Are there only two subjects? You have to assume that given that the options are uh, concrete, but then slight confusion can happen. So slight confusion like this now, uh, where you have to take suitable assumptions, such things have happened at least three, four times in CAD as well. Okay. So either do or don't, right? So if one, two question in a test also comes where even in CAD or in mock, when you're not clear on the instructions, leave that. You have to be there on the moment, select and solve the best. Try to be a topper, try to do your best every day. Doesn't matter if there's a question which is slightly not clear, leave it. Okay. Or if you can make a suitable assumption and solve, solve it. Right, get that achiever psychology clear with you. Okay, question number 20. Uh, five fruits, five boxes, one in each apple, neither box. Okay, this is this a uh, lot of constraints. It can be visualized with a bit of time. Is it possible? Very doable, but one cautious uh, case, uh, cases and constraints tackling is required, and two, a little bit of time. So, doable, but will take time. Okay, uh, this one. Point of intersection of two lines, okay. Uh, this is A, right? Okay, so yeah, there, there's a variable in this line equation, and Q is the point of intersection. So there's one line, there's another line. You get a point of intersection Q. So the first line equation is clear, the second, uh, the second line the equation is fine. The first line, uh, okay, the Q is the point of intersection of these two lines. This is Q, okay. P is the point of intersection of uh, two other lines. So let's say this is P. So, but here you have A, so you don't know this point. So you can find Q, but you cannot find P exactly. And you know this line as a line passing through these two points has a slope 2. So one, you should be knowing about, you know, uh, the line equation y minus y1 by x minus x1 is equal to y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1. And also the slope equation y is equal to mx plus c. So if you, the, you know these two uh, formulas, you can apply and eventually get the answer, right? Uh, very nice question. Okay, if you know these formulas, then the... It will take time. You know the value of Q by finding the intersection of these two points. Uh, you know the value of Q. So you get a point and you know the slope of this line. So you will get this line by, by using that uh, y minus y1 by x minus x1 is equal to uh, this, uh, you know, uh, slope, uh, the uh, uh, one point and the slope uh, equation, you will get it. You get this line and then, uh, uh, you know, you, you uh, get this point P eventually by uh, you know these two points and this. So there's a, a trice intersection, you'll be able to solve it. But lengthy, right? Look at the solution. You, know, uh, you will understand what's happening, but very lengthy. Okay. Uh, so my idea of this is difficult. You should not have, you know, for, uh, for, for get, again, uh, for the first 95 percent value, you don't need to touch such questions. Next one. Eight steps, if maximum minimum steps are one and six respectively. Tricky concept and very lengthy to check all cases. If you are using, uh, you know, if you look at the solution, it, it will talk about uh, the number of cases required, right? Uh, and uh, then it, uh, the cases which need to be omitted. It's a tricky concept altogether. If you are go good in PNC, do it, else not. All right. Uh, so overall, uh, if there is a question which is uh, tricky in terms of concept or uh, very lengthy, so I will call this one difficult as well. Then ideally, you should be attempting it if only you are very good at it and very confident in solving such questions right overall in the qa section also when you are doing the solution analysis okay 
if there is one or two question which you are not able to understand try to learn the process of solving the steps basically okay just to ensure that if a similar question comes in the exam you are able to tackle it all right so with that we come to a broad analysis of uh, this fc7 uh, moving forward i would like to uh, spend time, some time on running you through how you should be doing mock analysis uh, uh, in in general i mean uh, on your own so uh, let's uh, move on to that uh, part now right uh, so coming to the last part of the discussion let's uh, talk about uh, a typical mock analysis thought process now see always remember this okay uh, when you are analyzing a mock try to classify your analysis into parts so it's a two hour mock the analysis should vary six to eight hours okay how so first there, there would be questions that you uh, got correct but took a lot of time right there will be some questions so let's say out of 66 questions right let's say there were eight such questions just taking random numbers then there would be questions you got incorrect so suppose there were six questions you got wrong there could be questions that you could not solve not attempt because of time or whatever so not attempt maybe let's say there were 15 let's say 16 questions i'm just randomly saying so 30 questions which you did uh, so sorry 16 not attempted uh, 6 incorrect and uh, let's say 8 correct but took a lot of time those you got correct easily don't bother about them right okay so for the ones which you got correct but it took a lot of time read the solution see if there is a better way to think right uh, once which you got incorrect uh, these are your enemies uh, this should not have happened so uh, first retry okay then read solution all right and last step write down the mistake reason was it a silly mistake uh, was it an understanding error was it a finding error right write down the type of mistake trust me when you revise these mocks later in the months of october november uh, reading these will help you a lot okay so you should ideally have a mock uh, analysis copy where you know previous year and mock tests uh, you analyze and you write analyze uh, solutions and also the type of mistakes that you make so retry then read the solution and you know then uh, write down the reason for the mistake now once you not attempted so this whole retry properly okay full round of retry like you know uh, if uh, another one two hours of retry on the question that you did not attempt uh, then uh, check the answers and the solution you go another round on that right and then uh, if there are any mistakes again uh, you try to understand what mistakes you are making right so it's like a retest not attempted part kind of becomes a retest so this whole analysis will take a lot of time got it also uh, let's understand uh, this is not the end of it why am i saying six to eight hours once you do all this so let's say suppose you take a test on uh, suppose 27th july right you take fc8 on 27th july uh you uh maybe after a week or so once you uh do this analysis with solution and all the, the what i'm talking about and then you redo or revise okay these mocks after one 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 and one and a half months again so this revision also will take another uh you know kind of uh two hours so that i'm including when i say six to eight hours so once there should be a you know four five hours analysis retesting resolving so that you are clear on the mock right all the questions you could not attempt you got wrong you're clear on the mistakes and then again after a month or so you are redoing all right so that you build a process memory uh not just on your mistakes also on the type of new questions that you learn so that is one part later and there should be a copy because you know last october november you have to another one round revise all the mocks and previous year uh, papers that you will be doing all right so if you follow this kind of a consistent process uh, you will always improve let, let me also talk about what you should be seeking right you should be seeking a constant improvement 
okay so from one mock to the other all right mock one let's say mock uh, seven to mock eight just at when, when you uh, you have taken mock seven you have done the analysis you have write, written down uh, everything uh, redone retried so it's a let's say eight ten hour process which is over all right mock taking analysis solution everything now there should be some key takeaways now you need to write it down on your own okay what can you do better because if all of us have different performances on different days and each one of us is different as well just think of you know writing down what three things to look out for what can i do better simply in the next mock okay now these you have to evolve uh, find out on your own and just the target should be simple how do i get you know maybe 3 or 6 or 9 or 12 more score in the next mock okay so it's a marginal improvement uh, that you seek right and as these keep on building over time you keep moving up and up rarely there will be a mark where you maybe go a little down but consistency and growth right consistency and marginal growth mock by mock okay this is what you need to work on this whole process right you, you, you could feel that this is a struggle but that is the struggle uh, which uh, you know uh, makes gems so to become a gem you have to go through this struggle and start enjoying it okay it's not about that one two question which you're finding very difficult oh my god what will i do every cat aspirant feels that but you have to not look at uh, you know the very extreme difficult four to six questions you have to look at maximizing your output in terms of improvement and consistency if you keep that attitude you will definitely achieve right so with that we come to an end of this uh, mock analysis keep going uh, keep reading keep practicing keep attending classes keep taking the tests keep doing proper analysis all the best